makers of Johnson's Wax, celebrate the program's 28th birthday and bring you another polished period of persiflage and piccolinos with Rico Marcelli's orchestra, the Clef Dwellers, Charles Levere, and Marion and Jim as our precious pair of putt-putting protagonists, Fibber McGee and Molly. <laughs> Incidentally, we want to welcome to our studio audience tonight a large congregation composed entirely of McGee's, here by special invitation from Fibber and Molly McGee to take part in a grand McGee reunion. In fact, we have here in the studio practically every McGee in the city of Chicago, so it looks like it would be a great McGee evening. Now, in our program tonight, oh, but you'll find out, and now just to get dizzy enough to keep up with the proceedings, Marcelli and his men play I'm on a Seesaw. Seesaw, senor. one of the shortest scenes in radio history, folks. The curtain rises on the motoring McGee's as they drive along a busy street a few miles from Wistful Vista. McGee, watch where you're going. You're passing the stoplight. McGee! Who? I mean... Oh, shut up. All right, you! Put over there for the time. Gotta get this cop fixed. <laughs> Hear ye, hear ye, hear ye. The Cauliflower County Court is now in session. Rise, please, for his honor, Judge McGee. Rise, please. Oh, for heaven's sake, McGee. The judge's name is McGee, too. Now, maybe he won't be too hard on you. Probably turn out to be my cousin, Whittycomb McGee, that I tossed into the horse pond when we were kids. Silence in the court. First case. Will Clerk McGee read the charge? Chuck Smiley, you hear that? The clerk's name is McGee, too. Sure. <laughs> He's probably the one you tied knots in his clothes at the old swimming hole. <laughs> Will Bailiff McGee please keep order in the court? Bailiff McGee? The state versus Fibber McGee on charges of extreme individualism, mental agony, cruelty to Officer Egbert McGee, stationed at 14th Street and Oak Street. Reckless driving, violation of line 3, paragraph 7, section 13, statute 62 of the traffic code, going through a red light. Defendant, step forward. Defendant, step forward. That's you, McGee. Who, me? Who? Oh. I'm a dependent, though. Dependent, Diggernut. Go on up there. Clerk okay. McGee will administer the oath. And be careful, son. There's ladies present. Raise your right hand. Raise your right hand. What for? I ain't got to go no place. McGee. 
You solemnly swear to use Johnson's Wax. Plenty of Johnson's Wax. Nothing but Johnson's Wax to help your home. Talk slower, but I didn't quite get it. Is the defendant represented by a counsel? What say, Judge? Are you legally represented by counsel? Well, now, shucks, Judge. I, uh... <coughs> well, uh... <laughs> You see, uh, McGee, he means have you got a lawyer? Oh, no. I will be happy to take the case, Judge. Does defendant accept services of this counsel? Sure he does, don't you, McGee? I suppose so. <laughs> What's your name, lawyer? McGee. 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 Goldberg McGee. <laughs> and I'm a very fine counselor at lawyer. And how much do you charge, <laughs> Mr. Goldberg McGee? Well, considering maybe we're related to you, I'll make it cheap. And how cheap is cheap? <laughs> so 10% of the fine above $500. Of one dollar a day for every day in jail over 90 days. Positively the cheapest case I ever took, so help me Johnson's back. Five hundred dollars fine, 90 days. Listen, bud, I didn't get caught burning down the orphan's home or kidnapping the secretary of the treasury or no, nothing. Oh, he just went through a red light now. Oh, oh well, for five dollars I'll be pleading for you. For six dollars it tears in the eyes. Yeah. For seven fifty I'll be... Is counsel ready? If the court please, one minute. Is it my case for two bucks, yes or no? <laughs> okay, bud. But just one question. That foreman of the jury looks kind of familiar. What's his name? Marcello McGee. Marcello. They're ready, Judge. Examine. Your name, please? Fibber McGee. And this here lady is my wife, Molly McGee. Pleased to meet y'all. Hi, Molly. And uh, where yeah. was you born? Well, now, let's see. I don't remember. You know, Molly? I haven't the slightest idea, McGee. Oh, shucks, you know where I was born, Molly. Oh, where? I thought you said why. Oh. <laughs> in Peoria. That's it, in Peoria. Tell me, please, are you a citizen of this country? You bet you, son, and I can prove it. And how can you prove it? Well, I don't know the words to the Star Spangled Banner. Stick to the case, counsel. Okay, Judge. By golly, I'm stuck with this case, all right. Oh, Dad, Red, get on with it, brother. Get me acquitted. Oh, certainly, certainly. Excuse me. Uh, let me make you acquitted with Clutchville Cox, McGee. And Mr. Bale... You said acquitted, not acquainted, except... Proceed. Okay, Judge. Now, let me see now. Your Honor. Well, what is it? Maybe it please the court. I move for a dismissal on the grounds of Molly Pro. Molly who? Denied. Well, I was no harm in trying. <laughs> Listen, prisoner McGee, how is it happening? You was going through our stoplight. Answer me, yes or no? Yes. McGee. Uh, no. I mean, listen, son, it's a long story. Yeah. You see, way back in 1907. Yes. Or no, it was 1906. Yes. No, 1907. Yes, yes, yes. Now, that's it, 1910. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I was boss of the elephants on the Tuthill Twitchtail Circuit. Me and Scrappy Scrimshaw. Irrelevant. No, Scrappy had the rear elephants. I had the front elephants. <laughs> Now, the way we kept these here critters into good health, we used to shine their teeth and tusks with Johnson's wax. We will proceed with the defense. Yeah. Well, sir, this here wax polishing kept the elephants real happy and contented, but they used so much of it, we decided to make our own. And knowing it was made out of this here Carnuby wax, me and Scrappy decided to go get some of it down there into South America. The material. You bet you, Judge, it's all in the material. <laughs> well, sir... Me and Scrappy got into my car, set the sails, hauled up the anchor, and heads out across the landing field. Wait, please. A car. And you are setting sail on a landing field? Yep, the fastest motorcycle ever made. A motorcycle? That it built special. Well, sir, we filled the tank. Thanks. You're welcome. Huh? And sank to 40 fathoms. <laughs> we set the headlights nor-nor-east till we got off the coast of Brazil. Brazil? Not. <laughs> then we zoomed to a height of 8,000 feet, leveled off, and looked around. When all of a sudden we was passed by a school of fish. It's a fine defense you're making, McGee. Just a minute, please. Huh? At 8,000 feet in the air, you are passing a school from fish? Flying fish. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. So I turns to Scrappy and I says, listen, son, I says, it's your turn to take the rear paddle. Okay, says he. And we turns the canoe to shore and changes places. And a good thing, too. Why, McGee? <laughs> Why, shucks, we just about wore out the horses, see? Oh, seahorses. Yeah. So we made camp for the night, hiding our skis in the bushes so the engines wouldn't find them. And this is maybe why you were going through our red light, maybe? No, I ain't got to that yet, son. Oh. Well, sir, no sooner had we dropped off to sleep when I heard the boatswain's mate strike eight bells. So I leaps to my feet, wakes up Scrappy, and we hitches up the dogs to the sleds again. I cracks my whip and off we mushes. What? And left all the gold in the burning building? <laughs> Couldn't help it, Molly. You know how the Foreign Legion is. Oi, does this guy travel? 
We had to do our duty as we seen it. Well, sir, for weeks and weeks, we dug in that tunnel till finally we sighted a gunboat four miles off the coast. Chuck, I was so happy, I almost slept out of my wheelchair. Wheelchair? Gunboat? Tunnel? That's just about the way it happened, son. Me and Scrappy took the next train back from Siberia and landed with parachutes in Peoria with time to spare. And would you believe it? Folks everywhere said that was the best target shooting they ever seen. Oh, and I thought I was a lawyer. And what has all this to do with passing a red light? Well, don't you see, Judge Your Honor, my client didn't know whether he was coming or going. Reset. <laughs> The Cleft Dwellers issue a syncopated summons for the girl with the dreamy eyes. And we don't think there'll be any complainants. The girl with the dreamy eyes. Gather round and you shall hear the story of the gal with the dreamy eyes. She is funny, what can happen if sweet love should catch you napping? I'm here to say that I was caught by fate. My weak moment caught me shopping. I could hear my poor heart popping. What was I to do? Well, ladies and gentlemen, the man he knew was in the candy store. I got my big surprise. I bumped right into the saucy grin of the girl with the dreamy eyes. She sold the caramel. I asked you, was I wise? I bought a few just to say how do to the girl with the dreamy eyes. I didn't know if she could sew or if she knew how to cook. I only know my heart went on when she gave me the glad to see you look. Now at the baby shows, my son wins every prize. You know who his pretty mother is, it's the girl with the dreamy eyes. All she has to do is look at me, she wins the prize. I was jumping from a shower, had to stop for half an hour. Inside that store, already been there once before. I found out her name was Daisy. Just one smile and I went crazy. What was I to do? Ladies and gentlemen, I'm asking you. I was in a candy store. I got my big surprise. I bumped right into the fussy grin of the girl with the dreamy eyes. She told the caramel, I asked you was I wise. I bought a few just to say how do to the girl with the dreamy eyes. Then I did miss a candy kiss, and she got the gentle hit. When she said yes, I must confess, my heart was a stick of peppermint. And now I'm making gold, she is making pies. And I'm content that I pay the rent for the girl with the dreamy eyes. Oh, die, them eyes, the dreamy next case, Clerk McGee. Yes, Your Honor. Docket number 11987, Johnson's Wax versus Stained Dull and Scratched Furniture. Will the witness step up to the stand, please? Your name is Margaret Angel Cook? Yes, it is. Is it true that for many years you've been interested in collecting antiques? Also that you are known to be an authority on American furniture? It is true. And you're prepared to tell us how floors and furniture can be made more beautiful and easier to care for? Yes. All right, Miss Cook, go ahead and tell your story in your own words. Recently, a friend of mine in Michigan remodeled a pre-Civil War house. It was fun to watch certain partitions disappear and wide spaces loom forth, but the floors were a real problem, as they were of wide, uneven boards. The surface was bad, but the wood underneath was good. So after they had been sanded and given proper treatment with Johnson's finishes, the floors became one of the chief beauties of the house. Their waxed surface reflected the colors of the prism chandeliers and formed a lustrous background for the Persian rug. They were those rarely beautiful floors which only age and perfect care can produce. We know the value of our antiques is enhanced by the satin texture and gloss obtained only by intelligent and even loving care. But whether we have antiques or new furniture direct from the stores, they will grow lovelier through the years if protected with a wax finish. And now is the time to wax your furniture when the radiators are being turned on. I have found Jackson's, Johnson's Wax to be a most satisfactory wax polish. It brings out the beauty in the grain of the wood and gives a longer lasting polish at the same time preserving and protecting the wood. 
surely a thing of beauty deserves to be preserved. This testimony appears so undeniable, the opposing counsel admits the verity of the testimony and waives the right of cross-examination. So while opposing counsel waives examination, Marcelli waves his baton and presents a special string arrangement of Poor Butterfly. Let her fly, Rico. <laughs> McGee, ready for his client, Fibber McGee, to take the stand? Absolutely, Judge McGee. Mm, well, let Clerk Wilcox McGee swear the witness. Do you swear to you Johnson's wax, always Johnson's wax, and nothing but Johnson's wax to help you home? This is a swell spot for me to say no, ain't it? McGee! What? I mean Fibber McGee. What's the matter, Molly? Send to your case, McGee. Uh, uh, your Honor, can I plead my own case? Does the defendant desire a continuance? What does that mean, Molly? He means, do you want it postponed, McGee? Go on, continuance means to go right ahead. Not in court, McGee. Huh? No. When they continue a case, they stop it. And when they stop continuing it, they go ahead. Now answer his highness. No. No what? No, Your Honor. Oh, you mean you don't want a continuance? Yes. Oh, you do? No, I mean, yes, I don't want one. I want to go ahead and continue without no continuance. Who is the complaining officer, Clerk McGee? Officer Egbert McGee, Judge McGee. Mm. Officer McGee to the stand. Swear him. Raise your right hand. No, no, the right hand, you dumbbell. He says the right hand. McGee, it is his right hand. Oh, yes, he's on my left. <clears throat> Excuse me. Do you solemnly swear to use Johnson's wax, always Johnson's wax, and nothing but Johnson's wax to help you home? Sure, and I do that. Ha! Do you hear that, Brogue McGee? <laughs> We're as good as acquitted. I don't know, Molly. <laughs> I think that there harp has got a couple of strings loose. What are the facts in the case, Officer McGee? Well, yes, sir. Officer McGee. Uh, Your Honor, 
I was standing at me porch at 14th and Oak Street, minding me duty. What's the duty on flat feet, Molly? 10%? <laughs> hey, Judge. Your well, Honor. What is it? I got me a handful of walnuts here if you want them. You might just as well make that sad dreaded hammer useful. Order in the court. Put he off of the McGee. As I was saying, Your Honor, I was standing on me porch doing me duty directing traffic. I object. Pipe down, you. Chucks, I fired you long ago. That's why I'm objecting. Objection overruled. Put he off of the McGee. Uh, yes, Your Honor. I was standing on the corner of 14th and Oak Street. Doing me duty to the traffic. When what do I see but this nutty one? I object. Overruled. <laughs> Take them and wear them, Goldberg McGee. They're what? That nice new pair of overrules. <laughs> <laughs> you get it, Molly? I said it's for the police. Hey, ain't funny, McGee. Oh. Proceed with the testimony, Officer McGee. Uh, yes, Your Honor. I was standing there doing me duty to the traffic at the corner of 14th and Oak. Go on, it was 15th and Oak. It was not. Look, oh. McGee. Strike like that from the record. Yes, Your Honor. Proceed, Officer McGee. I, I was standing on the corner of 14th and Oak, Your Honor, doing me duty to the traffic, keeping me eye peeled for... Oh, yeah. Keep quiet, offender. Strike that out, current McGee. <laughs> That's two strikes on you, Officer. I object. And what are you always objecting for, Mr. Goldberg McGee? I'm practicing. Practicing what? Law. <laughs> Order, please. I am Jack! And make it me! <laughs> uh, standing on the corner of 14th. It was 15th, you uh, big Lugan. I was going south and you quiet. be quiet, McGee. Quiet yourself, madam. And who's telling Molly Mahoney McGee to be quiet? Is it not a public building? And am I not a citizen? And this man come busting through a red light, Your Honor. And I hold me hand up high, toots me whistle. Ah, toots. Silence! And, and do you think he'd stop? So he wouldn't have it. I'm, I'm objecting, I'm objecting. And furthermore, you big bastard. Order! <laughs> Order in the court. Defendant to the stand. Stand up and defend yourself, McGee. Okay, I'm going. <laughs> what can I do for you, Judge? I'm giving you a suspended sentence. Oh, they're going to hang you. I object! What you mean, you object? Who are they hanging, me or you? Order, order. I suspend the defendant's driving license for 30 days. You mean I can't drive my car for 30 days? That's right. Whoopee! And what are you whooping about, McGee? On account of now, I can get them brakes fixed. <laughs> Putting on my top hat I'm tying up my white tie Brushing off my tail Cause you see I just got an invitation Through the mail Your presence requested This evening is formal A top hat, white tie and tail Nothing now could take The wind out of my sail Because I'm invited To step out this evening With top hat, white tie and tail <laughs> Putting on my top hat, tying up my white tie, brushing off my teeth. Oh, I'm dooting up my shirt front, putting in the shirt stuff, polishing my nails. I'm stepping out, my dear, to breathe an atmosphere that simply reeks with mess. And I trust that you'll excuse my dust when I step on the gas. You're just an old smoothie. I'll be there. Putting down my top hat. Mushing up my white tie. Dancing in my tail. Oh, 
putting down my top hat. Muzzin' up my white tie. Dancing in my tail. We'll all be there. Putting down the top hat. Muzzin' up the white tie. Dancing in the tail. Top hat, white tie, and tail. From the picture top hat Settled out of court by Marcelli and his men With expert vocal testimony by Charlie LeVere Assisted by the cleft dwellers Which reminds us that we'd like to subpoena you As both judge and witness of what we really think Is a remarkable case of floor preservation Some time ago, the makers of Johnson's Wax Brought to this country from France A section of oak flooring that had been in constant use for 200 years Think of it for 200 years, this floor has been tramped over by thousands of feet. Yet the wood was in wonderful condition. It had a satiny polish, and there were no worn spots or scratches to mar its beauty. Now, here's the explanation. The wood had been protected with wax during all those years. Now, you can easily give your floors and furniture this same long-lasting protection and beauty by polishing them with genuine Johnson's wax. The pores of the wood are so tightly sealed by the invisible wax film that the surface is saved from becoming scratched and worn. And Johnson's Wax does away with floor scrubbing forever. Insist on genuine Johnson's Wax. Look for the bright yellow can. Oh, and here's a tip. You save as much as one-third the cost by ordering Johnson's Wax in the larger size can. <laughs> And that's the last of Fibber and Molly McGee from Studio E at NBC until we say hello at our Halloween party next Monday night at this same hour when we'll ring doorbells, grease the streetcar tracks, tip over refuse cans. Yeah. Well, Fibber? You gonna be there, Harpo? You mean Harlow. Yes, I mean Halloween. <laughs> you gonna be there, Harpo? Oh, you can't keep me away. Why? <laughs> you gonna bob for apples with us? I certainly am. <laughs> That's all I wanted to know. Hey, Molly, I just had me some good news for next Monday night. <laughs> <laughs> well, Fibber can't scare us. We always know what's going to happen because we bob for northern spies. We know our apples. So be with us again for some good, clean murder next Monday night at this same time. Until which time, we suggest that just as the best housekeepers use Johnson's wax and Johnson's glow coat to keep their houses clean and shining, so the most particular car owners... Keep their cars sparkling with Johnson's Auto Wax and cleaner. This is Harlow Halloween Wilcox spooking, uh, speaking. Good night. Robert <laughs> McGee and Molly come to you from our Chicago studio. This is the National Broadcasting Company.